welcome to Top to Bottom Male Male Romance Podcast, where we celebrate all things male male romance. I am Jessica. And I'm Marky. And this is our July top episode. Yes. Before we get into all the fun stuff we're going to talk about this episode, I have to remind you, because I do every episode, that we have reader groups. We have one on Goodreads and one on Facebook. You can jump in at any time and talk about our bottom picks for the month, a cool series that you picked up, comic book series that you fell in love with, TV show that caught your attention, anything related to male male romance. You can dive in at any time and talk to us about it. We also have a Patreon. Our patrons get inside information about any upcoming interviews that we have and get a chance to submit questions for said interviewee. So if you haven't had a chance to check it out, make sure you do so. And if you haven't done so yet, please go and rate us on whatever it is you listen to us on. It helps other people find us too. Yes. So we kind of started a little bit of a tradition last year, and we're carrying it over into this year. About this time last year, we did like a summer free-for-all reading kind of thing, where we didn't have a main bottom pick, but we just kind of read whatever we wanted and just did like a free-for-all kind of thing. Yep. General summer reading. Read everything and anything you can get your hands on. Just cram it all into this month. Yes. There's just always so much. I tend to get behind on series or, you know, there's things I've been wanting to read and don't have time. Oh, also just my cat's in here. So he might meow. Sorry. Oh, Kage. (laughs) He says, hello. He says, meow, feed me. (laughs) Anyways, uh, but, yes. Lap and purr, but yes, yes. well, yes. you know what, if Kage purrs and meows during this podcast, then it's just an extra treat for everybody else. <laughs> it, it's a win-win for everybody. But yes, since we read so many fantastic books throughout the year, we do fall behind on things that are on our to be read list and just kind of sit there forever collecting dust. So our summer reading is a chance to try to catch up on some of those backlogs. Absolutely. So, yeah. And we're also going to try to have a fun little treat at our bottom episode. We, I don't want to announce too much just because schedules changes and stuff, but tune in for our bottom episode because we might have something special. But for sure, we're doing our summer reading. So I guess before we get into what we're reading, should I... D- talk about our fresh banana yes and i love what you've done with this because i know i just i love the the banana symbolism or the you know the the way that we we use it in all of the most appropriate and inappropriate ways and Mm -hmm. you have brought to us a bunch of bananas yes so um our fresh banana this month instead of it being one singular banana it is a bushel of bananas but it's not just brand new authors it's kind of a banana buffet if you will of fresh bananas super green bananas and very well established bananas there is a prolific works giveaway that's going on july 22nd um and it's hot summer reads it is a comprise of i want to say about 25 to 30 authors and it's all mm romance short stories that revolve around summer as the theme and it's got some pretty cool people attached to it so i'm very excited about it but we'll make sure when it does go live to post a link so you guys can get to it but it's falls in line perfect with our whole summer reading so this is like a whole slew of fun short stories for everybody to kind of dive in on yes god and there's just there's a ton of people on there people i've been excited to read and you know short stories are a really great way to kind of sample a bunch of different authors because you know the books take so much time so this is a lot of really great stuff to mix into your summer reading Mm -hmm. A banana daiquiri, if you will. Yeah, there you go. Maybe it's more of a banana daiquiri or like a, what what is the thing that they do when you're trying out a bunch of different drinks? Flutes? Is that what they're called? Well, there's flights. Flights. Flutes. What the fuck? (laughs) Well, there's flutes of champagne. Okay, maybe that's what I was thinking. (laughs) A banana flute. Do with that (laughs) as you will. (laughs) We shouldn't be allowed words. <laughs> How I'm able to function as an adult in society is beyond me. Excuse me, do you have any flutes? I'm done. You know, they probably get that all the time. <laughs> yeah, and then they go back in the kitchen and be like, no one asked for fucking flutes again. I'm like, what is this life? So, we talked about our bunch of banana daiquiri buffet. <laughs> <laughs> yes, delicious. Extravaganza something. <laughs> yes. Have you picked out any of what you want to read for your summer reading? Yes, I have three picks and I'm going to get to all of them. If I have a chance to weasel in a fourth, if I'm just being super ambitious, I'll do that. But I've nailed down three for sure. I'm doing a regular novel, an audiobook, and a manga. Somebody who I've read, oh man, I guess last year, Tall Bauer. He did um, Enemies of the State, um, or I'm sorry, what I read of his last year. And it was this fantastic story about um, a Secret Service agent who falls in love with the president that he's guarding. It was 
great. I like, I love the way this guy writes and the characters were really well rounded and there was a lot of cool action and the build up between the characters was just super fun. So he just came out the day we're recording. This is June 26th. This, so his book literally just came out today, um, but it's called Hell and Gone. And it's actually like a cowboy murder mystery. <laughs> and I'm so excited. Cause like, I, I haven't read like good cowboy romance in a hot minute. I think the last ones I read where Sloan Kennedy's series that she did with Cowboys, which are, are of course are all great because Sloan's amazing. But I think it's been like two years since I've really like sunk my teeth into a cowboy thing. You know I'm not going to let you pass by this, right? Pass by what? Well, I've been reading a whole lot of great cowboy books <laughs> by Maz Maddox. <laughs> well, you so, are sweet and I love you, but... <laughs> but yes, also also great. But yes... Yes, cowboy murder mystery. I love it. Yes, so I'm I've very, actually very been excited. really. I really have been looking. And if anybody wants to message me or, or post on our Facebook page, I'm looking for MM Cozy mysteries. So if y'all could recommend any, that would be super awesome. And I mean like the super cozy, not, you know, the overly violent or anything like that, but actual like little cozy mysteries. So anything, any recommendations, let me know. I've read C.S. Poe, which is a little bit outside of the cozy genre. And I've uh, read uh, Gail Carriger's Fifth Gender, um, which is definitely cozy. And I'm looking for more. So any recommendations would be awesome. Yes. It's a good, good bring up because we've been talking about that recently, trying to find some good stuff for that. So this is the perfect place to to plant that seed and get the word out. Yes. <laughs> um, so next, the audiobook I'm going to do is Dying to be Loved, the first in the Curl Up and Die mystery series by Amy Nicole Walker. I actually have had this audiobook forever and I forgot I fucking had it. Like I, when we were talking about what we wanted to do for summer, I was like, well, I want to do an audiobook because then I can wedge in more books during the month because I, I have a long commute to work. I opened my Audible and it was at the very top and I was like, oh shit, when did I buy that? <laughs> I totally <laughs> forgot and I think I had started it and like something happened to where I, I couldn't get back to it. I think I fell down a podcast rabbit hole or, or something like that, but it's narrated by Joel Leslie and I fucking adore him and Amy Nicole Walker is a badass. So I don't know why I haven't like devoured this yet. So past me is super awesome and, and has got me all prepared for my summer reading. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. So I'm very excited about that. And that's, that's another uh, murder mystery kind of situation. So I guess that's just my book theme by accident this this month. And then the manga I am picking up is Monster and the Beast by Rinji, and it's a Yin Press manga. And I, I think that one also came out like yesterday or today, but it's about a beastly monster with a heart of gold. And then I guess he falls in love with a man who looks like a perfect gentleman, but apparently he's also he's like actually a monster, like he's a bad person or something. But it seems really interesting. And Lila from our last uh, episode actually recommended it. She was posting it on her Facebook and tagged me and it was like, since you like monsters? And I was like, oh shit, I do. So um <laughs> I, I was like, well, I'll go ahead and pick that up. So those are my three picks for our summer reading, and I'm very excited. That's very cool. Okay, so are, is Monster and the Beast a murder mystery? No, I think it's just a romance. Like, the, the whole synopsis is just that. Like, the monster falls in love with a man who seems like a perfect gentleman, but he's not really. And apparently it's got like a happy for now kind of ending. So I think it's kind of a cliffhanger -y situation. I think it might be kind of sad, but I'm going to give it a shot because I, it looks cool. And I like the, the way the monster looks. He looks like a big, big giant beastly thing with like super long hair and you can't see his face, but he's kind of like, got like this muzzle thing going on. And I'm like, ooh, neat. So yeah, I want to read it. Well, that kind of works out because I've also locked in three that I intend to do for sure. And then, you know, whatever else bonus comes after that. And two of them are on similar themes and the other one is not at all. So <laughs> that, some similar stuff. So it looks like I'm kind of taking a YA route a bit this month. Very cool. I'm in the middle actually right now of Red, White and Royal Blue by Casey McQuiston. I'm actually super cheating. I'm doing audio all the way. So that way, any bonus time I have at home, I can either do, if I'm not writing, I'll be reading. And I'm actually probably going to work in a lot of that prolific work stuff. The Hot Summer Reads will be hopefully filling in some of the, the gaps there and maybe any cozy mystery recommendations you guys throw at me before then. But so yeah, so Red, White and Royal Blue by Casey McQuiston is about 
the first son of the United States, you know, son of the president, and falling in love with the Prince of Wales. And it's kind of like a fr- or enemies to lovers kind of thing. Cool. And it's cute and funny and I, I don't know, enjoying it a lot so far. So it's been highly recommended. I, I found it rec- recommended actually in the Clunatics group, the TJ Clun fan group. And, you know, when they recommend something, it's usually right on to things I like. So, and this one isn't going to rip my heart out. So that's bonus. <laughs> I think uh, Will and At Jeff. At least it better not. Yeah, no shit. I think Will and Jeff <laughs> just got done reading it too. And of course they adored the hell out of it. So I think, I think you're going to like it. Nice. So when I finish this one, I'm going to be jumping into uh, Straight Boy by J. Bell. I'm doing this one, you know, I, I will listen to anything narrated by Kurt Graves. I adore that man. He's wonderful. And it's just soothing hearing him read to me. I, I love everything I've listened to him do. So that's another YA book. And it's about this gay kid who moves to a new city who is, you know, trying to imagine his new life and how things are going to be. And uh, he becomes friends with this guy. He accidentally falls in love with and kind of ambiguous to whether or not he's gay or straight. There's mixed signals and it's kind of the journey that goes through that. And so they're, they're friends and we get to find out if they get to be more than that. So those are my two YA picks. Nice. And then, so with whatever time I have left, I'm going to be doing the audio of the cut and run series from Abigail Rue, which I know you're really excited about me doing. I read cut and run the first in the series a, it feels like a billion years ago. Um, I think maybe even before we started doing the podcast. And and when I first started it, I, I don't remember like super getting into it right away. But like once I was into it, I was super into it. And one of my favorite MM scenes of all MM scenes is actually in that book. And that's the the kind of moment between Ty and Zane when they first like acknowledge what's between them. And Jesus, it's just fucking great. So my debate right now is do I start back over with that one? Do I start with the first one and relive that? Because that scene was just fantastic. Or do I go ahead and pick up on the second book and try to get as far as I can before the end of the month? And that's a tough call because I mean, I've, I've, I don't typically reread and I sure as hell don't re-listen to audiobooks. Like that's not a thing I do. And I've listened to some great a primo shit, like um, all of Ella Frank's stuff, all of her Try series. All of those audiobooks are fucking fantastic. I could probably listen. God, those are so dirty. Oh, those make so me so dirty. I get embarrassed yeah, oh next my God. to people. When well, especially because <laughs> Tate's voice is so deep, so it just like rumbles out of your car. It's ridiculous. Um, <laughs> but like, there's so many really good audiobooks, but I have such an attachment to Cut and Run. It is the thing. It, it's up there with Parks and Rec and Office for me. Like I will binge watch those series like from start to finish multiple times and will do that for the rest of my life. Like I'm just now finishing Parks and Rec again. <laughs> and I think I've seen the entire show like three times. Like I have a problem. Cut and Run is that same with me. Like I've listened to all of the audiobooks except for Touch and Go, because fuck that book, at <laughs> least three times. I, I I really love them. And I always start from cut and run and go all the way through. Like, I love it. And I even do the um, Sidewinder side stories with Nick and Kelly. And, and um, like, I just, I, I'm obsessed with this fucking series. So I would say start it over from the beginning, because, I mean, cut and run, while I do acknowledge that it does have some some flaws because I think it was, I, I want to say Abby's like first like real run with, with the genre. I might be totally off, but it's, you can see her grow as an author throughout the series. Like it, it's art, like Ty and Zane are so fucking great. But by the time that series ends, like I'm so madly in love with how she writes everything. Like she's just great. So I would say start it with the first one and just go through Cause I, I think they're about the same, like they're eight hours ish a piece. So I don't know how far you'll get, but oof, you need to get to uh, Stars and Stripes because that one's my fucking favorite. That's the sixth book. Do it! That's so good. That one's my, like, if if I don't want to start all the way over, but I just need something to make me warm inside, I'll just listen to Stars and Stripes. Like, I I love that book. That's I wanted to order that one for her to sign it when I was at GRL, and, like, you, you can't find it in print anymore. Like, I could only find somebody reselling it for like $40. I was so fucking bummed. So yeah, sorry. Tangent on that. Um, You should start at the first one. <laughs> All right. Well, it sounds like I'm starting with Cut and Run and we'll go from there. Yes. <laughs> well, and that'll be kind of fun because that one's a murder mystery as well. And now that I know the the answer, mm-hmm. you know, I, I know the ending, I can kind of pick up those little more subtle clues throughout, which is always fun. Yeah. And actually, I want to kind of bring it back on that. You said that you don't ever re-listen to audiobooks. That is how I reread. 
right now because I don't have time Mm -hmm. to sit down and like physically reread a book. But, you know, there's, there's definitely favorites and there's things I like to revisit and you always pick up more, you know, the more times you read through a thing, you, you get more from it from, you know, almost anything. And like, (laughs) that's, that's how I justify that as I use my audiobook time to reread those. It's almost like my guilty pleasure time. Yeah. That's fair. Cause I, I think I've listen to cut and run more than I've read it again. Cause it's just easier that way. Like I just, I'm on the road and it just, I, Oh, I love it. You're so good. You know, and the great thing about doing audio as a reread, you've already read it. Right. So if you have that moment where you have to like pay attention for a minute, like super pay attention because traffic or like, you know, distracted from one thing or another, or you just kind of space out and you stop listening to it, which I don't super have a problem with audio with doing that but occasionally I do find myself like they'll say something it'll make me think about something and I'll realize that I've missed like the last 30 seconds worth of what they were saying like shit yeah I've done that especially <laughs> but that's okay if they, when it's a reread yeah especially if they bring up something that's funny or like a, it's, it, my things with food if they like really start describing food and then I start thinking about like what that would taste like and then I'm like oh I'm hungry can I get that somewhere oh shit who died like just <laughs> <laughs> yes but I'm I'm gonna fill in any of the print time with the hot summer reads some stuff and bring me cozy mysteries. I need them. Mm. But yeah, I'm really hoping that we get to have our special guest for the bottom of the month. We'll have to see how that goes. Indeed, indeed. And we've got a lot of really fun stuff to listen to slash read. I'm interested to see what everybody else is doing because I I mean summer's the best time to binge on stuff. So there's it seems like it's ramping up in releases too. Like June was crazy with releases. It seemed like everybody released a book that that month. So I'm sure everybody's to read list is huge. So if you guys also have a giant pile of summer reads, we would love to hear what you're reading. Yes, absolutely. But I guess this episode is going to be kind of short. You had a monster of a uh, interview too. <laughs> to edit last week and I know that that killed like an entire day for you so keeping it short would be would be nice I'm sure (laughs) yeah I I do want to say that that was it was kind of a blessing and a curse because it was hilarious and fun and it's really interesting because there was four tracks of audio and nobody knows what the hell I'm talking about and like editing this stuff but trying to line up four tracks of audio when it's just a bunch of four hyenas laughing (laughs) their asses off at various shit and trying to make that line up that was a well, that was fun. <laughs> it was it was actually super fun, and I, I enjoyed doing that quite a bit. But yes, let's keep this one short. Yes. Well, I remember, too, when you were editing, you were like, what I've taken away from this is that GRL is going to be a blast. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Very much looking forward to Yeah, that. for sure. They're good good peoples. Indeed. All right. I think we should run away and start reading, because we got a lot of work to yes. do. Yes, we do. That is my plan for tonight as well. Nice. All right. So until the bottom of the month. We'll see you then. Bye. Bye.